The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 549 Your Best Friend A cacophony of voices surrounded Valet from every angle as she stood in a line, twisty and looking like it was set up to encourage as much cutting as possible. Her ears folded beneath the sunlight, trapped in the middle of the storm of Colosseum. Tournament registration day was here. It had been explained simply enough. With hundreds and potentially over a thousand challengers, the tournament organizers needed a headcount and official entrant names so fighters could be scheduled across multiple weeks of bouts. But she was starting to suspect the registration was a preliminary in and of itself. In the pushy, shovey chaos of the line, anyone whose diplomatic skills weren't as up to par as their combat would soon find that combat tested in a free-for-all brawl. Almost constantly, small scuffles erupted throughout the Colosseum Bowl as one fighter took issue with another, and they were resolved just as quickly by more fighters still. There were three types in the line, she soon realized. Hotheads who started fights based on race, costume, or whatever else. She suspected they were the ones without a proper cause to fight for. Professionals who actually could handle many opponents at once. They never started anything and only butted in when someone else disturbed the peace in their space. And then there were the quieter ones like her who did nothing at all. And those were complete unknowns. The earth pony in front of her wore a colorful, jaggedly patterned costume that covered his entire body and identity. The big bat pony behind her carried a tired look and seemed perfectly relieved to be next to someone who left him alone. There were actually a surprising number of bat ponies in the line, and Valet drew comfort from it, figuring this kind of event must have drawn them out of its promise and that she could blend in with the crowd for a while longer, being targeted because of her leafy ears. Without even a breeze to help things along, the line slowly pushed itself forward, and Valet patiently continued to survive. Next! The griffin in front of Valet finally was summoned as the head of the line fed into an array of processing tents, ten fighters able to be registered at a time. She had preferred standing behind a costumed earth pony to him, but when he shoved his way in, she hadn't cared to punch him out, and the pony hadn't either. It didn't add much to her waiting time, though, a tent at the end of the row flagging her down for entry. She broke into an eager trot, slipping away from the line and making for that cool, shady entry. Oh boy, she had survived. Well, I wondered if I'd see you coming through here. A familiar voice greeted from inside a tent, and she froze at who she saw inside. Come in, come in. Chauncey waved her in, seated behind a desk with dozens of boxes for sorting note cards stacked behind. He still wore his zealous burgundy pontifex's robes and mitre, looking for all the world like her friends hadn't promised a month ago to bring back his windigo and granddaughters, and never showed their faces again. One in ten odds, am I right? Let's get you signed up. Ah, Valet hesitantly stepped in, not wanting to turn her back on the crowd for long. Long time no see. What are you doing here? Chauncey nodded. A month is a long time, isn't it? As for your question, the Empire sources talents from all over the provinces for running this event, administrative included. Still a coincidence for us to run into each other like this, though. I take it you're doing well enough in Stormhof? Uh-huh. Valet held out a regent in a wing, hoping he'd hurry through with us. Got this thing here, you already know my name, yada yada yada. You're right, I do know your name. Chauncey scribbled something down in fast, meticulous handwriting, leaning forward briefly to check the golden card Valet offered. 
but uh, we're in no hurry. I bet you'd like to hold up that line anyway, stopping to talk for a bit. Hmm, take out some stored resentment for it after sitting through so many hours? It's never been an elegant part of this whole competition. Valet raised an eyebrow. It's your call, Pope dude. I want to register, and I'm not waiting for that again for a different tent, so stop beating around the bush. What do you want from me? And don't ask for something I can't do. <laughs> you don't trust me at all, do you? Chauncey chuckled, then hardened. Is there a reason for that? You were phone-napped on my lands. Your friends might have made a promise to me they were unable to keep and then not return to tell me about it. But Gazelle and Meltdown were there, and Wallace too. I'd have to be completely unreasonable to hold that against him, but you don't owe me anything at all, Valet. Why the long face? You're, uh, Valet fidgeted. She wanted to say creepy, but thought better of it. I'm kind of hinging on something I really want to do on you signing me up properly there, and things have been a little rocky between us in the past, you know? And I just made it for that line. No offense, but you try not being on edge. Chauncey continued his grandfatherly chuckle. This isn't information I tell ponies freely, but a long time ago, I used to live in Mistvale. I know a thing or two about meditation and emotional control. His brow shadowed. There, you're all signed up. As a show of trust, I won't keep you here. He held up a card for Valet to inspect momentarily, then dropped it in an organizer. But I would appreciate it if you'd hear me out for just a moment. Okay. Against her better judgment, Valet paused, watching him instead of leaving out the back. Thank you. Chauncey nodded appreciatively. I do want you as an ally, Valet. You have a lot of public relations potential after your role in the Iron Ridge events, and while I wouldn't do anything to put you in the spotlight without permission, I'd love for you and Isvaldi to be on good terms. I'm not asking anything except a hoof in friendship, and I'm willing to go far out of my way to prove it. Even now, I've been using a little influence and mm, bought some strings with a mutual acquaintance of ours to try to give you a small edge in the tournament here. Valet's brow furrowed. Nothing that would draw attention to me or get me in trouble, right? Valet, please, Chauncey beamed. I just miss having someone to do Tom these days. Okay, Valet slowly nodded. That's cool. Anything else? Chauncey gently shook his head. No, you can go be on your way. I just wanted to let you know I was rooting for you. Tell your friends you're all more than welcome in Isvaldi at any time. Well, do. Valet frowned, unable to resist the parting prod. Don't know how much it'll do, though. One of my friends is kind of super spooked and has a bad taste in her mouth about Isvaldi right now. Something about a mine poisoning the river she found out about? Chauncey's mood dropped. I see. Well, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who knows and doesn't feel that way. Lord Percival has had a lot to rebuild his province from. With the job he's done, it's understandable why he'd want to keep it. Valet nodded, but the invitation to leave had been there for a while, and uh, she didn't feel like answering that. Nothing stopped her from slipping out of the tent. Nobody halted her when she spread her wings and flew away, skipping the crowd and the line, and making her way directly back to the dream. Did he just want to be on her good side because he thought she'd win and wanted his wish granted instead? 
Or was this like with the pirates where bad ponies seemed magnetically attracted to her for no good reason at all? Uh, she sighed, feeling patronized. But that all could be fought about later. Right now, she needed a nap. End of chapter 549